We're watching films on the toilet Cause that's what dads have to do When the movie's unsuitable for your kids Then pretend you need a number two If you need a break from your family or spouse There's a lavatorial picture house Watch Terminator 2 while you're sitting on the loo Enjoy the whole of Rambo 4 with your trouts on the floor We're watching films on the toilet How about you? Boom, boom, boom. I want you in my room. Yeah, I want you in my womb. <laughs> what? I don't know what that means. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Can we start like that? Maybe not. I, I experienced a textbook case of gaslighting this weekend. I... Have you heard of gaslighting? Oh, yeah. What'd they do? I was at a party. It was not a cool mm-hmm. party. It was mainly old people. And a man walked around me. And decided to do it by putting his hands on my hips and then walking around me. I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And and he went straight away. It's like, and he went, I didn't touch you. What? I was like, you did. You just, and he's just like, I didn't touch you. And then he just walked off. That's weird. Classic gaslighting. He sounds like a horrible, creepy man. Yeah. Well, I got my own back later on. <laughs> oh, God. What did you do to him? <laughs> I escalated things big time. Of course you did. I did a thing. I uh, approached him from one direction, tapped him on the other shoulder, looked in the wrong direction, and I ran away <laughs> laughing. Oh, mate, you showed oh, him. Idiot. I hope you made sure that a real burly man was on the other side of him <laughs> when you tapped him. <laughs> a real brute of a man. He did, yeah. Yeah, and he went, Oh, did you just tap mm. me? What'd you call me? <laughs> it was Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah. Ooh, I didn't touch you, brother. Ooh, I can Ooh, hello and welcome to Watching Films on the Toilet, a podcast. Yeah, podcast, that's right. You're not listening to voices in your head. We may well ask you to kill someone. (laughs) So do it. Actually do it, it's actually okay. If if we ask you to kill someone, it's for a good reason. It's not like you're crazy. No. No, no, we're not voices in your head. Um, so yeah, we're a cu- couple of dads. Uh, we watch films on the toilet because we can't watch them with our kids. Uh, our wives, just our wives in particular, just don't ours. like violent films. Yeah, just ours. Look, we know there are some really masculine women out there who like violence. <laughs> okay, we're not saying all women don't like violence. We know the masculine ones do. So like you, you tried, you sort of tried. Not to generalise all women <laughs> by saying our wives. If your wife can rip an apple in half with her bare hands, <laughs> I'm sure she loves violent films. Our wives don't. There's that bit in, um, I think it's Civil War, Captain America, where he rips a log in half. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to meet a woman that can do that. <laughs> well, we could sit, sit down and watch some violent films with her. Jesus Christ. Anyway, <laughs> this week... <laughs> We have a guest, Damon. Yeah. So our guest is a wonderful man, a wonderful rock star Mm. called Rod. And he is the lead singer of Just A Ride, the band. And I thought, and I know you always go on about how, oh, grunge is dead. (laughs) I am all the time. Grunge, right? How (laughs) dead is it? Turns out it's not dead, actually. It's very much alive. And Rod and his band are pioneering the return of grunge with some hot rock. So we're going to be talking to to Rod later about 1994's The Crow. Oh, yeah. Starring Brandon Lee, uh, unfortunately deceased. So, yeah, later on. But first, Damon, anything? Well, there's one thing I wanted to update you on. Okay. Do you remember a while back, it must have been a month or so ago, Mm. we were talking about James Corden and I said I'd let you know uh, if I thought of something nice to say about him. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, still, I've still not thought of anything. So <laughs> that clock is still ticking. Uh, good old James. Got some uh, correspondence for you. Oh, yeah, get on. Oh, booty, get on. Dear watching films on the toilet, greetings. Racing car driver Jensen Button here. <laughs> oh, <gasps> no. <laughs> Can you believe it? Oh, my goodness. Just checking in with you fine fellows since young Benjamin mentioned my very name in your last episode. <laughs> it's did. quite true. I did shoot Ben in his face with an anti blunderbuss. <laughs> I'd wanted to test it out and was egged on by Kimi Raikkonen, who is obsessed <laughs> with old timey weapons. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, Kimmy. 
As you pointed <laughs> out, one of the benefits of a blunderbuss is you can pretty much use anything as ammunition. What <laughs> follows is a comprehensive list of the stuff I shot into Ben's face. Okay. Drawing pins, fishing weights, nail files, keys, Chinese coins, a big acorn, a blue Peter badge, a black currant wine gum, a miniature sombrero from the Maraca Man Lego figure, a hermit crab, eight hazelnuts, a priceless diamond, a wood louse, and finally, for good measure, a big handful of bullets. <laughs> Cheerfully yours, Jensen B. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Do you remember any of those individual things hitting your face? One of those really stood out. It was the Lego man's um, hat. Yeah. I knew it was that. It was actually that that took the sight away in my left eye. It was the priceless diamond that knocked out the other one. <laughs> in fact, it's still, um, they couldn't take it out of my head because it's uh, dangerously close to my brain. So you look a bit like vision. <laughs> yeah. My head is, is worth a lot of money. You've got the, the price diamond. You've also got a blue Peter badge, which I know a lot of people would like to get their hands on. I know. Get into Legoland for free. <laughs> Sweet. Did you see my face? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know what? It paid off. I say thank you, Jensen Button, and then thank you, and thank you, Kimmy, uh, for your <laughs> obsession with antique weaponry. He loves them, apparently. Makes a lot of sense. Whenever he he wins a race, Kimmy Raikkonen, he gets a flail out and swings it around his head. <laughs> he does. He's he's notoriously. Uh, does that <laughs> <laughs> in a Taurus, he does that thing you said ah <laughs> oh, terrific do we have any any news of toilet yeah council okay. sorry over hove seafront toilets like an ice rink of p <laughs> <laughs> okay wow the council says it is sorry for dirty seafront toilets which are described as being like an ice rink of p the public facilities on Hove Seafront were branded a health hazard after the urinals overflowed, covering the floor in urine. It sounds like a challenge to me. I know. And then I have to say, there's a brilliant <coughs> slash, I mean, awful bit of photoshopping where they've <laughs> got a, a, a photo of these this toilet floor and they've superimposed Torval and Dean <laughs> on top of it. <laughs> I don't watch any of those, you know, dancing on ice or whatever. Mm. But if it was skating in a urine-soaked toilet, I might be quite up for that. Get 10 celebrities, lock them in, and see who can stay on their feet for the longest. Which celebrities would you, uh, <laughs> would you cast for dancing on pit? Well, I think we can probably guess. Uh, yeah. James Corden, mm -hmm. David Mitchell, he's one of our favourites. Josh Widdicombe. Paddy McGuinness. Paddy McGuinness. Jamie Oliver can go in there. I just watched the, I just watched him on telly. He's completely lost it. He's putting flowers in his food. What? Um, who else? Any women we hate? Oh, they get me started. <laughs> what about just a nice woman? Yeah, just to shake things up. Um, Fern Britain. <laughs> <laughs> she nice? She seems nice, isn't she? And um, one more? Oh, who you really hate? Who would we like to see dipped in piss? There's so many people. This is... <laughs> I know. Jimmy Carr. Let's throw Jimmy Carr in. In Urine on Ice. <laughs> or no, what would it be called? Gliding on Wee Wee. Oh, that's nice. Gliding gliding on Wee Wee. Wee Wee. <laughs> gliding on Wee Wee. <laughs> <laughs> and now on BBC One, Gliding on Wee Wee. <laughs> <laughs> And you know how, like, uh, in uh, the end of F1, for example, yeah. on the winner's podium, they uh, blast each other in the face with uh, champagne? They do. Proper blast, yeah. End of this show, you don't get blasted with champagne. <laughs> you get blasted with Weiwei. With Weiwei. <laughs> Safe. Okay, well, that means it's time to chat to Rod. Rod? Hello? Can you let us in, please? Open the door, Rod. What, now? Yeah, yeah, right now. I, I can't be held responsible for, for what you will uh, encounter. We've seen it all. Yeah. Nothing phases us. Yeah. Are you sure? Can Just, just prepare for what I'm about to show you. Okay, go on, let us in. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, you were right. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. But, I mean, you're here now, so... I thought you were a rock we... star. Well, you know, you should have seen Axl Roses. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for, for having us in. Rod, you are the lead singer of Just A Ride, an awesome grunge band. Is that right to say? Yes, yes. Although in recent weeks, we've uh, I've noticed, um, you know, we do the old paid promotion because, uh, you know, we are slightly selling out. But people, <laughs> we say, you know, we're a grunge band. We want to keep grunge yeah. alive. Grunge lives. And the most common response we have is, that's not grunge. So, oh, right. you know, <laughs> okay. make of it what you will. I'd say grunge is what you want it to be so just ignore the haters yeah absolutely absolutely i mean if there are enough of them you might want to consider what they're saying no never never listen (laughs) this is really embarrassing because i asked ben what kind of music it was and he told me acid skiffle so i've been boning up i've been boning up on that for the last few days that sounds like album number two really doesn't it (laughs) that's right yeah does Eamon got trapped in an acid skiffle wormhole. I like acid bath skiffle. Oh, It's a good way of disposing of the skiffle, yeah. but in an entertaining way that's also a, a creative outlet. If you've got a load of spare skiffle you just can't get rid of, stick it in a bath full of acid. It's good. And you, um, Rod, you also have your own podcast, which is The Tracks That Made Us, is that right? Yeah, The Tracks That Made Us. So uh, we um, started off just between the members of the band talking about the the tracks that influenced us and uh, then at the end would do a cover of said track Uh, but we found it was actually a really good way to connect with different bands and uh, do some little collaborations so uh, it's been really exciting actually meeting different uh, artists from literally all over the world and with the power of green screen sometimes we can almost appear as if we're in the same room when really you know, we're just doing our rock star moves in, in a little cupboard. If only you could come together in some sort of confined bathroom space like we have. I think that would really add to the the vibe, wouldn't it? I think that we, yeah, it'd be great. And the extra sound effects you could get <laughs> for the percussive, you yeah, know, the atmospheric, especially if it was recorded in like Dolby Atmos. Oh, yeah, the deep, very deep tones and uh, deep bass, little squeals. I'd love to hear someone trying to sing a song while straining to do a dump. I wonder what <laughs> songs would really lend themselves to that that kind of performance. Um, I'll tell you what, it would be Ben. It would be that. Yeah, and yeah, it would. It brings new meaning to uh, sound. Hey, oh. Literally, mate, literally. Yeah, name of the podcast. <laughs> so today we are going to be discussing the 1994 movie The Crow, starring Brandon Lee. And as I hope you are aware, Rod, we begin our review breakdown of the movies with what we like to call the summer we, which is a brief summary set to a big urination. Um, so have you had a big drink for me this week so I can have some time? Yeah, so I've recently returned from Poland and I was, obviously they drink a lot of vodka there, but I was introduced to a special kind of vodka called Krupnik, which is a honey vodka, um, which is really strong, uh, a little bit more viscous, so I think it will definitely um, clean you out and <laughs> give you ample time for the summer week. Oh, fantastic. How long do you reckon I'll get? Uh, I reckon at least a minute. All right, you know. cool. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go for it. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. So, Brandon Lee plays a rock star who's beaten and murdered along with his girlfriend by a gang of absolute scumbags on Devil's Night, which is the night before Halloween. A year later, the gang have not atoned for their crimes and Brandon Lee is brought back to life to kill every single one of them under the watchful eye of a crow. He discovers that he has Wolverine-like healing powers and sets about exacting revenge on the jerks that killed his girlfriend. There's one that throws knives, one that drives a car, one that looks like Axl Rose and one called Skank. He also pays a visit to the junkie mother of a skateboarding child who him and his fiance used to hang out with and tells her to sort her life out. Brandon takes out the last of the gang members, but before he can return to the grave, the skateboarding kid is abducted by the crime boss whom the gang were working for. So he heads to a church to save her. The bad guys work out that injuring Brandon's crow will take away his immortality, so they do. But thankfully, Detective Ernie Hudson is there to help Brandon kill all the bad guys and save the little girl. Then he heads back to the grave to be reunited with his fiancée, which is all quite heartbreaking, really. The end! Right. Minute and seven seconds. I'll take it. Well, yeah. So, 
Rod, do you remember the first time you saw the crow? I do remember the first time I saw the crow. I think it was shortly after the VHS came out okay. because I wasn't old enough to go and see it at the cinema. Yeah. And I'm trying to think it was probably 96 because it was at a friend's uh, 11th birthday sleepover. <laughs> he had incredibly irresponsible parents, but very fun ones. Yeah. And we watched The Crow and I remember just being quite scared by it. Yeah. As an 11 year old. And it's just amazing how little of the story um, stayed in my head uh, until I rewatched it uh, recently. Yeah. I remembered so much more about him being a rock star. Oh, right. Um, I think that's probably just, you know, me projecting what I found interest- like really interesting about him as like an 11 year old wanting to, you know, be a musician and be in a band, you know. And, and when I was thinking about the film, I was like, oh, yeah, it's about the guy who's a rock star. And I think I confused all of the because there are lots of scenes of bands playing in the bar. Yeah. And I think in my head, that was him playing all of them and him doing his guitar solos on the, the roof. We only see him as a rock star. He, like you said, he's just on the roof playing his guitar briefly and then he just smashes it. That's rock and roll, right? Yeah. That's how you vent your frustrations, isn't it, Ben? Yeah, I get a new guitar. No, you don't have a guitar, though, do you? You have uh, a comb and a piece of paper. <laughs> a comb? Yeah, you know, when you use a comb and a bit of paper, and it goes... Brruh, 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 <laughs> and then you just smash it on the floor, because you're so cross. Quite hard to smash a comb. Exactly. And you pick it up and use it again for the next time. Yeah. It's really interesting what you were saying there Rodney because I, I, I remember so clearly it was either a 10th or an, or an 11th birthday party I went to for a sleepover and we watched the Chucky film was it Child's Play the first yeah film yeah cool. we watched that and Aliens as well <laughs> which, which, yeah. which is my favorite film now but yeah. I remember at the time like f***ing shitting myself because it was <laughs> so scary <laughs> and violent isn't it weird like for me, that was like 30 years ago. I can still remember it really well. Because as well, like at sleepovers, you would stay up all night. So you were sleep deprived <laughs> and then yeah. watching content that really isn't designed for your brain to process. I mean, it's probably like a light version of doing LSD. Really. Yeah, definitely. The first time I saw this film, I lost a tooth and I can't say why. <laughs> I know how I it did. is. I know. I know how you did that. You know how I did that. Um... Yeah, but Eamon, do you do you remember the first time you saw it? This is the first time I've seen it. I've not seen this film before. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I'd be interested to see what you thought. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I think any any film that you watch like this from from a long time ago, you kind of remember it as you saw it then. Whereas what, watching it now, I imagine my viewing of it is totally different to to, to you guys. I would imagine so. C- Cars on table. I was like making a pasta sauce for the majority of, of the time when I was watching this film. Um, you make a pasta sauce on the toilet. That's right. Yeah, I have a little, a little stove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we didn't actually talk about how we watched these, this film because I know, Rod, you've gone all out. You have very much tried to embrace the ethos of the podcast in your watching of this film. <laughs> yeah. How did you view The Crow? Well, it's really interesting, actually. I did watch the bulk of it on the toilet. Good lad. Which, of course, I'm going to. I mean, that's the premise of the show. But um, we were staying with my mother-in-law in like a in like a one and a half bedroom flat. So really, one of the most appropriate places to watch it and have any privacy was just to go and sit on the toilet. <laughs> yeah. um, but I finished, I did the last 15 minutes in uh, on the flight back in an airplane toilet which i thought was yes. pretty cool yes. so it was the uh, watching films on the toilet mile high edition for me <laughs> uh, i mean that's rock and roll isn't it i bloody love that <laughs> you you have set an awfully high benchmark for the next guests rodney you really next, have. next time i'm going to be like what where do you watch this film in the toilet F- off mate <laughs> rodney watched it in a plane I mean, it was Ryanair, so, you know. <laughs> okay, so maybe like a Virgin Atlantic toilet yeah. might slightly yeah. raise the bar on that. Or one of Richard Branson's flights to space, if someone watches it in that toilet. <laughs> Virgin Galactic, yeah. Yeah, that would be good. A zero-G poo. <laughs> <laughs> Floating past at the end of the crow. I yeah. think if you could watch this in the toilet in a famous person's house, that would be that. that's the only kind of thing you could do, I think, to compete. Ooh with watching it in an aeroplane. Mm. Maybe Dane Bowers? <laughs> <laughs> You're out of your mind. <laughs> Bravo, yes. 
Uh, well, I mean, music <laughs> trivia is my forte, so you know. It also, the the idea of going to a celebrity's house and then spending about an hour and a half in their toilet. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, like when you're staying with uh, with people who don't speak the same language as you, you know, being able to watch a film in the toilet was actually a bit of a godsend. That does sound like a bit of a relief. So. How did it hold up? What did you think coming back to this film after being mentally scarred by it when you were 11 years old? What were your first impressions? The first thing, I'm a little bit into grammar. Okay. And uh, there is a punctuation error within 30 seconds. So they refer to Devil's Night the first time without the apostrophe, but then forever in the film when it's referred to in text, there's an apostrophe there. Oh. I mean, as a film... I. I think it stands up pretty well. Mm-hmm. It, generally, the aesthetic of the film, I thought, was was amazing. Like, I thought it stood up pretty, pretty damn yeah. well. You know, the action sequences were great. Story and um, some of the weird stuff in the film, I mean, it is batch crazy. <laughs> um, one, and, and also, also, like, in terms of the cinematography, one of the things that really grated me was every flashback was shot in the same way. It was red, wasn't it? It was just red. Yeah, it, and it was... Uh, but, being in a grunge band, all of those flashbacks were like an Alice in Chains music video. It is well grunge, that film. If it had come out about five years later, it probably would have been like a new metal movie. <laughs> oh, they, would have used, they would have used corn and Deftones on the soundtrack. And it wouldn't have been a crow. It would have been Fred Durst, who, who was his spirit guide. It probably would have just been called Break Stuff. Yeah, that would have worked. Why didn't they do that? Should have done. Should have done that. Yeah, it, it's pretty wild. There's so much that happens that, like, Ernie Hudson's character, for example, he just spends the whole film just following him around and not advancing the story in any way. In fact, most of the characters are just talking about what he's done. And we've well, already no seen it. there's no exposition from the main character. No. It is not clear at any point, or it just kind of happens. But there's no him going, oh, shit, I can see what the crow can see. Yeah. Or I've worked out why I'm here. It's kind of odd like that. And I also can't work out why the senior detective hates Ernie Hudson so much. <laughs> he just seems to be a d- Well, maybe he didn't agree with the way he, that he let all the ghosts escape into New York City. Possibly. Mm. Is this set in the same universe as Ghostbusters? I'd like to think so. There's a little bit of trivia that a lot of us didn't know. <laughs> yeah. You're right about the exposition. <laughs> it made me laugh when you have the voiceover from, from the little girl going, uh, sometimes when people are really horribly murdered, a crow brings them back to life. <laughs> and that's, 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 and you're supposed to go, yeah, okay. <laughs> Like, yeah. yeah, of course, yeah, no, I know, we all know that. Crows bring people back to life. <laughs> it's like she made it up in class. <laughs> yes. like, it's, it's like her creative writing, mm. you know, homework, and they've made a Hollywood movie out of yeah. it. I mean, one of, th- one of the things that I thought yes. was uh, interesting, he appears to have been buried in the clothes he was murdered in, which I thought was a bit strange. Yeah. <laughs> he then doesn't really have any idea of where he's going and the crow is kind of messing with his head, but he finds abandoned shoes... That just happened to be his size. A crow, crow shows is... him, doesn't it? Oh, does the crow show him the shoes? Yeah. This is what's actually like genius about it, because the crow tells him where the shoes are, and it takes him up the ladder and stuff. It, it's showing him around. Ooh. This is the interesting thing. Like, if, if this film was made today, there is absolutely no way the producers would allow the film to start at the inception of the superhero. Yeah, you need to have like yeah. an hour beforehand in which you see who they are beforehand and then things slowly evolve yeah i mean one of the things i I was thinking about how it just got straight in quickly but i think there was so much made of brandon lee died during this movie like i mean I, i was only i don't know nine when it came out but i'm half chinese and i grew up like watching hong kong cinema and all this kind of stuff so Bruce Lee's son dying was a big deal in our house, Mm. you know, so I was aware of that. And I think that might have been a little cover for let's just get straight in on this. But the one thing I think watching this movie was when people say, oh, he would pretty much finish shooting his shots. Like, I think that's complete bullshit. I agree. I I think there must have been so much more. Yeah, I've read a little bit around it saying that that they did have to add the narrator and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I imagine that. There were some sort of big rewrites that they had to do because it did feel pieced together, didn't it? 
fact, I also read that apparently the execs wanted Michael Jackson to wow. be the crow <laughs> when they were first shopping the film around. I can see that. Have you have you guys ever read the comic? Yeah, I have read the comic. He yeah. looks like Michael Jackson. So he, he does. But does he act like Michael Jackson? <laughs> Probably not. Actually, do, do you know what? We were talking about like movies being more brutal back then than they were now. I watched Moonwalker the other day with my child. Oh, yeah. And I, I mean, you know, a lot of people might frown upon that. He's a great dancer. He's a great dancer. He is a great, great dancer. Yeah. But that film as well, Joe Pesci basically beats the shit out of a small girl. <laughs> Does he? Um, and then beats the fuck out of Michael Jackson. It is, it is insane. Yeah. But a really good thing is a few days later, we saw uh, Transformers mm. and my daughter was like, is that Michael Jackson? Because he turns into a car, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he does. Yeah. No, that one's called Bumblebee. So Michael Jackson's a transformer. It took me about a minute there to realise what you were talking about. I was just like, <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> Jackson be- but yeah, he literally turns into a car, doesn't he? And does he not become like a plane or a rocket yeah. or something at the end as well? It's mental. Yeah. Do you remember the extended video of black and white? Uh, black, black or white? And at the end, he just seems to like, I don't know, dance on a car, f- a little bit, smash the shit out of it, and then turn into a puma or a yeah. jaguar. He did. Walk around. Did he say, ho? Yeah, a lot of that. And I'm like, this is amazing. Like the, To be <laughs> yeah. at the pinnacle that you can put that on the BBC at seven o'clock. Yeah. But that was when they were spending $10 million on music videos. Yeah. But that, that is classic, someone being so big, you cannot give them notes. <laughs> yeah. So if you're the producer of that, you know, you know this bit at the end where you dance in a car and jerk it and then become Panther. <laughs> so I wonder if you could just do a dance <laughs> instead. You do not dance. Do you want any good dances? No, I want to do all those things. Yeah. So yeah. Lucky that I guess they didn't use Michael Jackson. That would have been quite weird. I thought I had heard, but it was kind of, you know, when you think you've, you've heard something in a dream and you're not sure it's real, mm. but that apparently Brandon Lee was the early choice for Neo in The Matrix. Is that right? Because yeah. they wanted a kung fu actor, essentially. Yeah, that makes sense. How did you feel about Brandon Lee? Did you feel like he would have gone on to be a massive star? There was some delivery from him that really reminded me of The Room. Yeah. But then there was actually some, especially the laughing. Yeah. <laughs> what? Also, also, just another thing. When he talks to, I think the guy Gideon. Shit on me. Yeah. He, okay. he starts quoting the raven. Yes, that's right. Well, I mean, I know it's a bird, but it's not the same animal. Do you know? Do you know? I thought I thought that was a bit. That's right, yeah. But I thought his delivery then was quite good. Like, and as Edgar Allan Poe famously said, shit on me. Tell me, <laughs> tell me. My favourite line in the movie, though, was, or well, one of the guys he's trying to kill gets knocked down by a car. Oh, yeah, yeah. The guy gets out of the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mind, he he's does, just yeah. knocked someone down. He grabs him and calls him stupid <laughs> asshead. Yeah, he does. The reaction is insane. I think that's the world they live in, isn't it? That's Very that's, aggro. That's the broken city. It's horrible. Did you guys find the level of derangement of anybody who was remotely bad quite worrying like they were just absolutely insane beyond well Eamon you are a big fan of goons massive fan of goons a lot of goon going around in this film how did you feel about about they goons this tell you who this reminded me of a lot is I don't know if you've ever seen this Stallone uh, film Rodney Cobra I have years ago it's very similar to this in which it's just like a marauding gang of psychos and my massive issue with that film, and the same with this, is there's no real motive. At one point, the big bad guy is saying, uh, hang on, I wrote it down. We're going to throw a little party, start a bunch of fires, and make a little profit. And you just think, how? <laughs> how, how does any of that make profit? And it reminded me of that, that South Park meme, where you have the little, little gnomes, where it has phase one, collect underpants, phase two, question mark. Phase three profit. It's exactly <laughs> the same structure as that. Yeah. I have a massive problem with films from this era because of that. The producers have gone like, let's just make them as crazy and horrible as possible. But if they have no motivation, it's meaningless. They're just like concepts of bad rather than an actual bad person. The gang men, they perform a sort of devil's night ritual, which is swallowing a bullet. 
Have you ever swallowed a bullet? No, I haven't, but um, it would be an interesting trip to the toilet afterwards. I know, right? The internal damage on the way down. I mean, armour-piercing rounds. Yeah. What if it went off? Eamon? Uh, yeah, I swallowed one of those, uh, one of the massive sniper bullets. <laughs> <laughs> I went right to the bullet shop, and I was just like... Slammed down about 50 pounds. Like, give me the biggest bullet you've got. And he gave it to me and I swallowed it. I went, oh! I swallowed it right in front of him. That was um, to celebrate your son's christening, wasn't it? <laughs> That's right. And That's you gave right. him a little one, didn't you? you gave him a little okay, one. Yeah, my son had a tiny little bullet that, that he could swallow. Not Just that look. back. Not that back, chap. <laughs> there you go. You're a real man in the eyes of God now. <laughs> <laughs> Rog, you're a rock star. You must have done some crazy stuff involving bullets. Dodged a few bullets. Um, I don't know, involving bullets. Or shots. Oh, shots, yeah. I mean, actually, back in the day, I was in a rock band prior to Just a Ride many, many moons ago. I was like a teenage rock star, I guess. Right. And um, we got sponsored by Jägermeister, Hey-o. which was very, very dangerous. Nice. So this was like what, 2002 or 2003. So Jägermeister hadn't really broken through to be sold in the UK. It was big in Germany, big in the States. And they had a strategy, and that was rock music. Right. And um, you could sign up to be a Jägermeister act, and they would basically send you, I think, four bottles for every show (laughs) you did. And what you were meant to do was you were meant to give... Um, two bottles to the venue. Right. Like, so they could basically add it to their inventory and they could sell it and it's, you know, see how this goes with your punter, punters. Mm-hmm. And then you were meant to have one on the merch stall that you could give to people for, to try for free and then push them to go to the bar. And then you had one for, one for yourself. But, you know, obviously... Obviously, you know, we would drink all of it and then go, yeah, it never arrived. Can we have some more? And they would just keep sending it. It's a sweet deal. But, um, the, the kind of the shot glasses were shaped like bullets. Ah. So that was something. And you, you'd get this foam brick with like 24 bullets and then you would put all the things in. So that, I guess it's a shot, it's bullet. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, led to many terrible decisions and probably mm. um, sped up getting dropped from our record label. So, <laughs> you know. Really glad I brought that up. <laughs> I was going to ask... If you guys were resurrected by an animal, what animal do you think would resurrect you? Ooh. What animal would follow you around? Yeah. Oh. oh. What would it be? A mandrill? Mandrill. A chicken? <laughs> I was thinking a meerkat would be quite good. It, it could just pop up if something was bad was going to happen. Just... You, oh, That's right. Know. Yeah, be super vigilant. I could imagine when you saw through its eyes... It would really alert you that something was going to happen as opposed to, you know, the crow That's just true, kind of yeah. just going around. And... Yeah. Mm. What was yours, Eamon? Um, an alpaca. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> they just look nice, don't they? They just look nice. They do look nice. Nice and warm. I bet you could probably ride it if you got a bit tired. Yeah, that's true. Maybe just a horse. Or maybe a motorbike. Maybe a motorbike brought, <laughs> brought me back to life. Shetland pony would be quite good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now you're talking... You couldn't get any crime fighting done because everyone would be stopping to compliment your pony. I would like it to dance like the one in the three advert and everybody would be hypnotised and do the yeah. dance. <laughs> you could come back from the grave and instead of seeking revenge, you just give people rides on the pony and that's enough. Yeah. And but then you just go back. People will be going, oh, its mane is very soft. Yeah. And you go, I condition it twice a week. <laughs> Maybe what you would yeah. do is you'd actually kind of like a cross between that and Minority Report, where you're the pre-crime division mm. and something's about to happen, and then all of a sudden you turn up with this lovely little pony, yeah. and the person who's about to murder their wife because he's found out he's cheating just goes, "Oh, that's a nice pony," and just rides oh. around and, "Oh, cool, have a cup of tea, right? You know, you didn't kill anyone. Let's go home." That's good. <laughs> Why did you yeah. turn up? You're about to murder your wife. I'll see you later <laughs> on. <laughs> that is that is the genesis of an amazing film. <laughs> Just a man <laughs> appearing with a little little pony under his arm. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa! Before you do that, Lee Harvey Oswald, <laughs> have a look at his face. <laughs> have a look at his face. Come on. I mean, one of my questions was going to be, where would you take the crow next? If you were in charge of the cursed franchise. I mean, we've got the pony. I think that works really yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, I feel we've kind of hit on the Ernie Hudson. And if we were going to take it further... It's the crossover, isn't it? Mm. Ghostbusters meet the crow. That could be something. I mean, I'd like to 
say I knew other Ernie Hudson film universes that may be able to do the crossover, mm. but I would be struggling. Hand That Rocks the Cradle? I think he's in that, isn't he? Those two have been begging for a crossover. The Hand That Rocks the Cradle universe. He's in Oz. <laughs> we could combine it with Oz. <laughs> I mean, you could quite easily combine Oz with yeah. The Crow, I think. Is it not in the same universe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ghostbusters and The Crow could be interesting because... They'd actually become like the villains because they're getting in the way of the crow doing all his revenge by blasting energy at him. And he's just trying, he's just mm. trying to kill everyone that's wronged him. But the Ghostbusters like, hey, stop, you supernatural force. Yeah. It's that kind of peppy dialogue that really made uh, Ghostbusters <laughs> the hit it was. <laughs> so, lads, in conclusion, would you flush the crow down the toilet <laughs> like close the lid <laughs> ah, ah, and just <laughs> until what's it was going gone. on in there <laughs> <Nothing>. <laughs> uh, until, until it was gone or easier than a pony though definitely it would definitely be, yeah, easier than a pony yeah. um or would you would you fish it out of the bowl and Perch it on your shoulder like a, a little companion. Rod, you're our guest. You can start. I would fish it out. There's a lot wrong with it. But yes. if you turned the sound down and didn't have to, you know, and maybe just skipped some of the flashbacks, like, I think you would watch this and still go, yeah, this looks this looks cool. And I think it's influenced a lot of things. Yeah. The Dark Knight, like the scene where all of the criminal syndicate are meeting, that really reminds me of uh, the Joker where he comes in and he talks to the TV screen. And, you know, obviously the, the makeup and everything. And, and I think a lot of the mannerisms of, of uh, Brandon Lee really match what Heath Ledger was doing. I'd have to, like, look at what Heath Ledger talked about as his in- inspirations. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if the crow was one. Yeah. So I think just for that alone, I would, uh, yeah, you've got to fish him. You fish him. I think, yeah, I think the, the makeup I know was an influence for the Joker. Is that right? apparently so mm. so imagine that the performance was too mm-hmm. i would also fish it out coming back to it it did stand up it looks cool i like some of the action sequences and i do feel like brandon lee had a lot of magnetism he was very watchable and in the end it is just really sad that he's gone but yeah i would fish it out mm. i love crows as well top bird Eamon, what about you oh it was a really tough decision actually because um yeah that's why i put you last thanks for giving me the extra time you know, it does look good. I know they were hampered by the tragedy that happened during the filming and, you know, they, they had to work around, you know, using what they've got and rewrites and, and whatever. But I do really struggle with the whole, no preamble, we're just going straight in, into this. I always think it's good to see things unfold in real time so you can see why this relationship he has is so precious and, and therefore why it's so terrible that he loses it. Whereas if you start with the assault and then kind of ha- have to jump back to it, I think you kind of lose a lot. And, and also, I just can't get past the cartoonish villainy of the baddies. Like, I think all they needed was like just any motivation at all. And can't quite bring myself to, to fish it out just because it just needed a bit more motivation for me in the baddies. So you flush in? I am, I'm afraid, yeah. Flushing that crow. I'm using a plunger to go <laughs> right down there. <clears throat> <laughs> well that means the crow will not be flying into the tank of glory but if i fish it out can it replace hard boiled <laughs> you said it now it's done um so <laughs> oh well thanks so much rod yeah thanks man no worries man. so much fun we're gonna leave your bathroom now and you can get back to your business um you've got an album coming out right yes yeah it's available for pre-order now i think we've uh Sold at least one copy to someone we don't know. Hey! <laughs> Boom! You live in the dream. That's amazing. Are they all new tracks on it? Or have you released some of the tracks that are going to be on it already? We've done the whole modern band on Spotify. So uh, there's, what, 10 tracks on the album. Mm. And we'll have released six of them. Okay. <laughs> well, I've loved all the tracks that you've released. So it'll be nice to hear those other four. Yeah, those other four. And there's, and there's, for, you know, there's acoustic bonus tracks as well. And, uh, you know... We're, we'll be straight back in the studio in November, just awesome. recording bits of album. Sweet. Two, so. Oh, that's great, man. Well, thank you. Best of luck with everything. And um, we'll see you again soon. Definitely. So we'll yeah, let you get back to your business. Absolutely. 
finish my dump. <laughs> Thanks, man. Take care, guys. <laughs> Bye. Okay, well, that was wonderful. Thanks, Rod. Cheers. Cheers, bye. And uh, now it's time for our top five. So this week, obviously, uh, the crow is a bird, and we are going to choose our top five birds from films. (laughs) So the person who guesses the most of the other person's birds will get to choose next week's film, and the other person, what done, gets them wrong, does a forfeit, please. So, I think I lost last week. Indeed. Cool. So, I get to go first. I'm going to guess you have the pet raven from It's a Wonderful Life. I do have that. Yes! <laughs> well, yeah, it's a, good, uh, it's a good film, isn't it? It's a great film, yeah. Okay, fun. good. All right, boy. You guess. I'm going to say this is a double. Kez from Kez. No. Oh. No, not Kez. But, you know, nice, nice bird. <laughs> yeah, good uh, good feedback. <laughs> it's a lovely bird. Okay, um, this would be a double. Kevin, the Himalayan pheasant from Up. Yes. Yes! Yes! He's really funny. Yeah, he is. He's hilarious. 2 nil. No? Oh, you've got to get this one. Yeah, okay. Okay, go on then. Mordecai in the Royal Tenenbaums. No. Ah, oh, what? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so that makes oh, me the win man. Shit. Win man. Hi, I'm the win man. <laughs> oh this yeah. This was a dumb. This was a dumb <laughs> game. <laughs> this is really hard. I think this this is my egg styles. This is yeah. <laughs> this is my egg styles. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. That's good. All right. Cool. What were your choices then? Well, I had Kevin in up. Kez from Kez. Rocky from Chicken Run, uh, The Raven in It's a Wonderful Life. And this was kind of like a smart alecky one, but I had the Maltese Falcon. Oh, for goodness. I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't have to deal with that. Yeah, what were yours? Uh, I had Kevin from Up, uh, The Birds from The Birds, oh, uh, the Hitchcock does, film. Are you allowed to choose all of them? Yeah, you can have all the birds. <sighs> Amazing. Right. Uh, okay. Scuttle in The Little Mermaid, who's a very comical, daft bird. Yeah. The Seagulls from Finding Nemo. And um, uh, the big eagles from Lord of the Rings. Really? I'm surprised that you went for them. Why? I like them. I've They're never grand. heard you mention them in my life. What? And all of a sudden, <laughs> you're passing yourself off as a fan of big eagles. You've, you've heard me talk about all those other bears. I've heard you mention all the other four. <laughs> you're right. I'll often bring up Scuttle on the <laughs> night out. <laughs> oh, mate, that Scuttle. He's got me in fucking bits. <laughs> Oh, mate, yeah, but at the end of the day, it's got on it. <laughs> anyway. Well done. Yeah, thanks. I like that. Um, so, forfeit for you, Eamon. Mm. Okay, so you have to uh, spend a day with a crow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no problem. See, see where it leads you. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Terrific. And last week, I had to eat... A uh, large marrow stuffed with meat. Mm-hmm. How was yeah. its uh, moisture content? Quite high, but mm-hmm. I feel like the moisture is sitting on top of the clog of meat that's been made in my body. Well, also, remember, you, you had to share the stuffed marrow with my elderly Italian neighbour. <laughs> that's so, right. So how, how was the date? Well, she I'd say she had most of the moisture, actually, so I basically ate all the meat. I, I have all the moisture, <laughs> and you have all the meat. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. She said, yeah. so you give me the moisture part, you can eat all the meat. So I did. I yeah. did. Um, and I regret it massively. You don't get to that age without picking up a few tricks. She murked me, much like Rio Ferdinand. Do you remember Rio Ferdinand's prank show it was world cup wind-ups of course i do <laughs> you've been murked i thought rio was going to pop out of that old lady's cupboard oh ben you've been murked she's eating all the wet marrow you've just got the meat <laughs> that'd be the weirdest world cup wind-up ever <laughs> <laughs> what a choice of words <laughs> <laughs> all right great a well, quick word about our sponsor yeah Eamon. 
Don't you just hate it when a paper straw melts in your mouth? Oh, it's the worst. Oh, God, you hate it. Mm. I left a paper straw in a can of Coke overnight. Yeah. And when I came down in the morning, it had gone. Oh, what? I know, right? So what we really need are more plastic straws. Mm. They will love melt. Them. They won't melt. They won't dissolve. Uh, and uh, thankfully, we our sponsor provides plastic straws by the bulk load. <laughs> and if you go to the last straw dot Aberdeen, mm. you can order two thousand straws for six pounds. You cannot beat that value. You can't. Um, <laughs> you can't. And uh, yeah, so do that. <laughs> Use the offer code climate change to get 60% off your order of plastic straws Oh, and uh, it's put them wherever you want toss them in the bin mm -hmm. put them in the sea it's, it's your choice ultimately yeah I think it's uh, it's, it's sort of custom uh, the first thing you should do when you open up your box for 6,000 straws take a big handful just throw them on the street <laughs> that's, that's it okay so, so that's the end of our show and uh, what film are we going to watch next week? So next time we are going to watch The Shallows, Ooh. which is uh, from 2016. And uh, Blake Lively mm -hmm. is um, pursued by a big shark. Let's go for that. Let's have some, let's have some fun with that, yeah? That's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Sounds good. Yeah, good. So that's that. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to us. Review us. Tell your friends about us. Mm. And if they uh, don't like the sound of it, then um, ditch them as a mate. Yeah, don't be their friend anymore. Yeah, they, you can do without friends like that. That's right. Oh, hey, 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 mate. I've I've listened to this really great podcast called Watching Films on the Toilet. Oh, that sounds rubbish. Well, why don't you go and jump in front of a bus? Yeah. Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or just, you know, disown them. One, one of yeah. those. <laughs> that's the kind of thing we were talking about earlier when we say you, when we get you to kill someone it's fine <laughs> this this is exactly the kind of thing we were talking about exactly if, we, if someone else says it yeah it's fine it's yeah. good it's good right. right take care amen it's one one last thing to do yeah oh is that you, your end? Yeah. You, I have a screaming child who's having a nightmare. So oh. I will say now. Well, on that note. On that note, keep blushing. <laughs> okay. Uh, There's a good end. Bye. 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 Bye.